Hello everyone, this is Ambi. Let us talk about um, Python data types. Another data type uh, is going to be, this time we, let's talk about um, lists. Okay, so let me go ahead and create a new notebook for you. Let me call this Python. Uh, I'm gonna just say data types, yeah lists uh, let me say python yeah data types 3.7 you might wonder why do i don't do the typing and everything on the uh, session here why don't i have it pre-prepared i mean i have some notes but i want to do it while i'm with you so that you now you get time to grasp i don't want to just run through it so that you have to play it again and again pause take a break and you know do stuff that's why you know you get to download this notebook whatever that i have typed here uh the notebook that i have prepared so that you can go along with it and in the middle you will get some breathing time i don't want it to be a continuous uh what do you say fire right so let's uh, uh let me increase the font here I hope this is enough. Import platform, platform dot, yeah. Mm. Okay, let me, so platform dot Python underscore version is 3.7.x. Okay, so let's go ahead and import string and then let's define our um, Justice League, Batman, Superman, Aquaman, Flash, Wonder Woman. Hmm? Okay, so now if I type, type JL, as you can see it's a string, then do JL equals JL dot split, comma, colon, and then you will see jail is i got a new jail so what is this type yeah so it's a list so when you split a string it automatically gets you the list from that so how do you go ahead and do indexing and slicing uh, how we did with uh, string earlier right let me take it here indexing and slicing escape capital m shift enter okay so indexing jl zero yeah the first one um indexing from left to right starts with zero indexing from right to left starts with minus one same as the string minus one here oops jl yeah so index from left to right starts with zero index from right to left starts with minus one that's always it's always true with python with any type of data series so this gets the first item here. This gets the last item here. And then, hmm. Let's go ahead and get string dot ASCII underscore lowercase. We have, this is what I have. So I'm gonna call it alphas equals. That is alpha bricks this but if you see alphas here so that's a string let me go ahead and alpha list al i'm gonna call it al i'm gonna convert that string to a list see what happened yeah a to c i have um, a list now if i do type al it tells me that it's list right so let me go ahead and do AL again, AL zero. 
here zero till nine yeah so again always the let me go ahead and do one more thing for you here zero nine one is the same as what you have on the top if you remember our uh, discussion with strings it's also similar here so what does it mean um, whatever that is left to the first colon is start point whatever that is right to the first colon is end point then whatever that comes after the second colon that is this it is the um, um, shift or say shift element how many times or how much it has to shift so what in English it means is uh, here it means from 0 till 9 not including 9 till 9 always end gets excluded so the end point gets excluded so from 0 till 9 not including 9 so 0 till 9 excluding ninth item yeah so that's what you are getting here 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so here what does it mean from 0 till 9 get every first element so when I'm saying from 0 to 9 from the same thing so get every first element so a zero uh, always the first element will get printed so from here it is zero and one so b got printed so b will be counted as zero and then the next one is one so everything will get printed but if you say two so every second item will be printed every second item will be printed but always always if it's uh, zero that means uh, zeroth item gets printed anyway no matter what when you are skipping uh, numbers like this so from zero till nine every second element this is that's what it means then we know that if I just do this, that means everything. There's no start point. That means default is... Uh, okay, let me do this. Another one. That won't get you that, right? Because there's nothing. There are only three parameters. Since there's no start point is given, let me go ahead and start uh, default start is zero uh, default end is infinity then default um, skip point or jump to point is one okay so let me go ahead and uh, get that syntax here I'm gonna So as you can see, list, start point, end point, jump to point. And if nothing is given, it will take the default. But what if I've given just one of them? Let's say I've given a zero, or let's say one, or let's say I've given 22, yeah? So 22 is a starting point, end point is not given, so infinity are endpoint is equal to the length of the list here then hmm, let me see infinity or length of the list so default it took infinity here endpoint default skip point is one and i'll take this I'll put nothing here. I'll put 22. Now what happens? 0 till 22. I'll take this here. Remove 22. 
output nine. So zero, infinity, every ninth item, including the first one, that is including the zeroth item, right? So that's what we, that's how we index lists. Yeah, so. You can also do, uh, if at all, let's say you're not, uh, you're not aware of what is the endpoint, you can also do like this. AL, instead of saying, well, let's say what is the length of AL? Length of AL is 26, right? There are 26 letters. So what you can do here is AL zero, uh, let's say endpoint is length of AL. It's a, a bit of neat way of doing it. Let me say nine or 19. Then this is what we have here. Uh, apart from this, yeah, we also have some built-in functions that we can uh, use. Let's say you wanna add an item to uh, let's say to this list so let me go ahead and uh, ALS I'm gonna do ALS uh, for a shorter list uh, let's say ALS short zero uh, length of AL and I want to skip every I want to get only the fifth item Hmm. Okay, interesting. And what did I? Okay, let's say 26. Okay. Yep. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, this is obviously working. And what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna put nothing here, and I will put 15 here, and let's say five. This is working, so I'm gonna say ALS. Alpha numerics, or alphabets, but a shorter list. Yeah, ALS, AFKP, so let's say you want to add something to this al dot append. Let's say you want to add nine to it. Hmm. Okay, I wanted to add to als. So als afkp uz nine. We just added nine to it. So list dot append x appends x to the list at the end but what if you want to change that element um, you want to let's say right now we know that let's say let's calculate the length of als that is seventh zero one two three four five six yes that is seven what if we want to change the sixth item that is nine to something else we can do like this als let's say six and i want to make it 66 yeah so earlier it was in quotes now it is not in quotes right I can also do this. Yeah. So this is an integer type. We have so multiple data types can be added to a list. A list can contain multiple data types. It, a list can contain lists as well. Then okay. I'm gonna add some notes here for us. 
Okay, add an item to the particular index or position of the list. In this example, insert 66 to the sixth place position of index list. Uh, this you can't do with tuples, they are immutable. So since lists are a mutable data type, that is changeable data type, you can do this. What if you have something else? Let's say, um, I'm gonna say, uh, string dot digits, right? So this is, um, or let me do this rather. I'm gonna say nums equals one, two, three, four, five. A list of you it's a tuple actually but now you will see what happens because uh, the brackets that's a clear giveaway the type of brackets that I use ALS dot extend nums ALS as you can see now what happened is it order I mean it added this particular nums tuple to this you it extended ALS with this this was the original ALS this was nums extended this with this let's say nums equals one comma two yeah uh, let's take a list now hmm. Now let's say again ALS dot extend nums. What happened? ALS again one two got added. It can accept duplicates, so that is not going to be a matter. What if it's a set? Yeah, set is this one comma two. Then ALS dot extend nums ALS. One two one two again. So this is what a list dot extends does. List dot extend iterable extends a list with a given iterable. Uh, iterable is anything which you can iterate through it. Iterable is a collection of items that can be a dictionary, a tuple, a list, or an array. So what is AL? We still have this AL. Okay, let's define, redefine it. String dot ASCII underscore lowercase. Yeah. So this is what AL it is, but we want to make it a list, a list AL and AL. Yep, we have it here. Then. But what if we want to go ahead and choose only a few items? Let's go ahead and do this. Mm, three, yeah. I think this is fine. Yep. Now, what if we want to add or append an item, not to the end of it, but somewhere else, somewhere in the middle or to a particular index? We can use insert for that. Zero. Let's say bat. Al is. What if I want to add it somewhere else? Mm, let's say seven. Yep. At the seventh index, you see bat added there. Forward. So basically, list dot insert i comma x adds a given x at index i this is what i have now what i can do here is I'll, i want to remove let's say bat huh what happens bad it removed the first instance of bat they want what if I have to remove all of them? I have to run it again. Yeah, but so ALC. However, now what if I do it again? 
it returns an error because that is not there. If the item to remove doesn't exist, yeah. So list dot remove removes x from the list. Let me make that markdown. Okay, so now let's see al al dot pop. What happened? Y al dot pop. V. So what it does is al dot pop without any argument. It pops out the last item, last element of the list. But if you want to be specific, l dot pop say two. You can provide an index and it will remove from the zero, one, two, G was at the second place. It got popped out. So list dot pop I pops and outputs the element at index I from the list. If no index is given, then it pops out the last element. Okay, let me make it markdown. So whenever you're entering code, for that you have to use code. If you're entering some text or let's say notes, then I use markdown. Okay, so how do you, this is AL, what if I want to clear it out? I want to empty the list. Very easy. AL.clear, AL. So list.clear clears out the list. It empties the list. It removes all elements from the list. And all st statements are true, um, just for the sake of it. You know. Okay, then let's uh, define another one. String dot digits AL 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So I'm gonna do then Okay, let me do this here. AL is list of AL and AL here. Okay. Now I have a new list containing 0 to 9. AL dot index 1. Mm. Okay, what is the index of 1? Obviously, it's 1 al dot index nine nine hmm what if i want to let me add one item to it al dot append nine seven yeah, nine seven and now al is this al dot index nine seven that is at the tenth index so you enter you want to know the index of a substring you enter that substring here it will get you the substring so list dot index dot i or say x outputs the index of element x in list let me do this all right then apart from that we as we saw earlier we can let's go ahead and insert some more values here three comma one index AL is this, let me say, yeah, this. Now you see 
and the third index we have 11. Now if you want to find al.index where is 11, it's at the third place, right? Now you, it will also take additional arguments, uh, al. let's say index 1 comma 3 comma 8. So what does it mean? So get the index of 1 between 3rd and 8th index. So um, I want to know uh, from the 3rd item, 3rd element, that is 0, 1, 2, 3, and 8th uh, element, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, that is 6. So from triple 1 to 6, in between them, I want to know the index of 1. So there is one here, I printed out four. So let me do another one. I want to know the um, index of, let's say, let me add a few more ones somewhere. Okay, let me say, I will say five, right? I want to know the index of five, but instead of eight, I will say 11, yeah? What happened here? Five is not in the list because Five integer is not in the list, but five string is in the list. Seventh, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, so two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So fifth is at seventh location no okay so here it was a list uh, get the index of one between third and eighth item but if you see the third is zero one two three so three if you take this as zero now zero one two three four five six seven no so four Interesting. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. Is it giving the wrong index? Three and eleven. Okay, let's say three and nine. Yep, correct. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is the seventh item. What if there was another seven there? Okay, let's say al dot insert. Yeah, I say another. I will add another five at um, seven. Yeah. Okay, it should be the way around. Seventh is the index I want to add, and five. Okay. So AL, as you can see now, I have two five. Go ahead and uh, run this again. What happened? So it returns the first occurrence of it. What if I give 11 here? The first occurrence of it, not uh, if there are many duplicates, if there are many elements in that particular list, it will give you only the first one's index. So I think we might want to modify this bit. I'm going to say list dot index of X and then I have start. I have end. Yeah, so you have a starting point, you have an end point from where you want to do the search. Let's say you have a very huge list. You don't want to search everywhere. You are particularly particularly interested in searching uh, something between two indexes. Then the good old count. Uh, AL dot count itself doesn't do anything because you have to give an input. It says it counts the occurrences of the given data. Let us say one, how many times one has 
uh, occurred or present in this particular list only once. We're talking about one integer. But if we say one string, then also one because there is only one string. What if I say five here? Five occurs twice, so you see twice. Yeah. So what it does, it let me go ahead and create a new one here list dot count e counts the number of times e occurs in the list so you have you know how to count you know how to append um, let's go ahead and insert real dot insert the first index we're gonna add a al is this let's go ahead and uh, try to remove now al dot remove one now let's go ahead and it remove again it won't work as if you know as you know it's not there then we have another one a dot sort what does it do uh, it sorts the given list however as you can see it's a mix of integer and string you can't do it so you need to have either integers or you need to have just um, the string so what we are going to do is we are going to go ahead and you know recreate uh, this particular list let's say dot down l dot digits r let's not be lazy let's go ahead and type it here one some random numbers zero yeah now i have say type al so it's a list al dot sort hmm so as you can see it altered the original given list it sorted the list it did not uh, give you an output uh, it didn't give you a copy where everything is arranged uh, you should also know that by default uh, it takes another argument that is reverse which is always uh, false but you can set it to true so what it does is it sorts them in reverse yeah the default value of sort is false yeah the default value of reverse is false if nothing is given then the default will be assumed then you have let's say uh, we are going to create let's create uh, one more list six two this is also a list one eight nine seven yeah and then list one that is list two is batman superman flash aquaman yeah now let me go ahead and uh, create a function for you here i will say define sort func uh, if you know i know that i have not covered functions in python yet but uh, just for the sake of it try to just go through it i will cover them in detail later sort function so what i have done is i am just creating a, a function zero returns zeroth item yeah and i will create one more function sort function one it takes an item and return item one 
returns first item so i created two functions then i'm going to do ls1 sort oops sorry that's a typo ls1 sort yeah so ls1 is this as you can see one eight six two nine seven eight sorted the elements now what if i want to give my own criteria of sorting it ls1 dot sort key is sort fun what did i do here sort func interesting hmm what does it say type type uh, traceback modular tuple object is not callable yep okay so we are going to use uh, something else and then let's go ahead and make this a list yeah invalid syntax where at least two is not an invalid syntax okay that is because this yeah okay now i can do this list object is not callable that's interesting actually it, it should be callable let me go ahead and do it again. LS1 here and LS1 dot sort key sort fun one. It works. Same way. Now I'm going to say LS1. Okay, so it arranged uh, the elements from based on the a zero and the first element two seven eight so two is smaller than seven seven is smaller than eight let me do it again ls1 dot sort key sort fun hmm for some reason it says six nine one list object is not callable actually i'm pretty certain it is i might have done something here yeah all right there's a typo so yep now it should work now with the tuple also it should work um but if i do here tuple as you can see you know i'm not immune to typos a single typo will uh, cause a lot of mess yep ls1 ls1 so this is the original data now here you saw uh, here you saw that you know it's uh, we are using the sort function one that is it is going to use the first item sorry it's going to use the first item uh, from this uh, nested list that is this is zero item this is the first item zero item first item zero item first item right in when it comes to indexing so what i'm doing is sort key that is for each uh, of that particular uh, nested list i'm going to call this particular function and tell python that okay you don't use your own sorting algorithm i have created my own um, algorithm here i mean it's not actually an algorithm but yeah i have created my own standard here you go ahead and sort that entire nested list based on my priority here uh, the way i have how i have defined here 
So in the first one, sort func or sort function one, uh, I have defined uh, the zeroth element to be the standard. So one, six, nine. One is less than six, six, it's a ascending order, right? But eight to seven, they are not in, they're not ordered. If you see here, I have used sort function one where the sorting standard is the first element that is uh, the two, eight, and nine. Here you see that two is less than seven, seven is less than eight, so they are in ascending order. This is how you go ahead and do the sorting. Hmm. Then ls2, ls2 is this, ls2 dot sort. See what happens, ls2, Aquaman, Batman, Flash, Superman. So what it does is, if it's a string, it takes the first letter, and from there, it sorts A, comes before anything, B comes after A, F comes after B, S comes after, you know. So what if I want to do my own standard? I don't want to have my own standard here. Okay, so. I am going to define function letter zero, that is some string. I'm gonna say sub, uh, I'm gonna say some string. Let it be more clear, return some string zero, that is the first string. Let me create another one, letter maybe three, okay, letter three some string return some string three so i created my own functions now so what i'm going to do here is j uh, ls2 dot sort key equals letter zero ls2 so yep yeah, aquaman batman flash superman so letter zero in aquaman is a I mean, letter zero in Batman is B, letter zero in Flash is F, letter uh, zero in Superman is S. So they are in ascending order. Now let's look at this. Another one, ls2 dot sort key letter one, or oh, letter three, I'm sorry. I have not defined letter one, letter three then ls2 is now superman comes at the second so that is because 0 1 2 3 third is a 0 1 2 3 e e comes after a correct 0 1 2 3 third item in batman is m third element in flash is s so it makes sense. So you can define your own sorting standard and pass them as you know, a function or a key. That will sort them based on your star, the standard that you have set. Yeah, of course, also, as I said, you know, uh, it's um, LS2 comes in reverse, right? So you can, um, by default, the reverse is set to false. Let me go ahead and do something else. Uh, ls2 dot sort. Uh, let me take the same thing. Control A, Control C, Control A, Control V. Uh, key letter is already there. I'm going to say reverse equals true. Yeah. ls2. See what happened? Just the reverse of this. So by default, reverse is false. Okay. So whenever you want to reverse sort a list, you can do this reverse false oh, sorry true which is by default it is and you will get this r we can just do ls2 dot reverse there's a new built-in function that takes care of it thank you python because see whenever you come across such scenarios you can use built-in functions um, just have a list of them or have this uh, 
uh, Python notebook every now and then have a glance at it so that you will remember them. Okay, so let me go ahead and uh, write this for us. Let me, this is uh, the notes that we want to remember. So list start sort reverse false key function sorts a list. Reverse, again, it's an optional parameter. Default is false. So optional means you don't have to give that. If you don't give it, it will still take it. Again, key is an optional parameter. Define your own sorting order, uh, sorting standard or sorting function that we saw earlier. Let's say list.reverse. Um, hmm, okay, we already did. Let me go ahead and put that for you here. Okay. Simply reverses the list, it is the same as list.sort reverse equals true. Yep. So now let's say id, huh? id ls2, id of ls2 is this, id of uh, ls, okay, let's say ls3, uh, let me do ls3, and that is going to be ls2, ls2 dot copy, what did I do here? Okay. Then ls3 is going to be this. Let's calculate id of ls3. As you can see, uh, the ids are different. ls2 and ls3. Now ls2.insert, I'm going to say at the index 3 do insert cyborg ls3 is this but what about ls2 ls2 did not get changed because the id you know uh, ids are different now list uh, copy does a real copy and uh, not a uh, shadow copy List dot copy and does a real copy and not a shadow copy. Real in the sense like deep. That's also known as deep copy. Now let's go and create a stack. How to let's discuss stack in list stack one comma two. Now stack dot append is three. Then stack is this stack dot append for stack is this stack dot pop. Oops, pop pops the fourth, then stack dot pop again, pops the last item. So append always appends an item at the end, pop pops out the item at the end. So if I do it multiple times, again, again, because there's no item left now, it's a stack, is this stack dot pop again, right? So stack. Okay, let's not be uh, lazy because when you're looking at it, you might want to right stack dot pop is one. Now, if I run stack, it's empty. So stack um, the list methods make it very easy to use a list as a stack where the last element added is the first element retrieved, last in, uh, first out, right? To add an item to the top of the stack, use append. Uh, when you say top, uh, here we are talking about uh, end, end of the list. So if you take a list which is horizontal, keep it like, you know, vertical head down, <laughs> uh, or make it like, you know, stand up, then um, or it's actually head down, leg up, then top whatever that you kept at the 
Stacking is something where you're stacking cards, right? You keep one above the other. The same way here in list, whatever that you add, it added, uh, it gets added at the end. So that is why um, horizontal, you know, a list is just another uh, horizontal stack. So to add an item to the top of the stack, you use append. Uh, to retrieve an item from the top of the stack, use pop without an explicit index. Let me type all that here. So you, so this is how you implement index. Now if you go here from collections, import DQ, yeah. A collection is a module, from that module we are importing this. LS2 is what? LS2 is Aquaman, Batman, Flash, Superman. Okay, so now what we're gonna do here is we are gonna implement Q. Q. I'm gonna say. So what is the Q? Uh, Q is. Q is. First come, first serve. Okay, so that's a queue. So queue dot pop left. Yeah, queue dot pop left. Pop the leftmost. Pop the leftmost item from the queue. Hmm, okay. Oh, I have to define a queue. Okay, uh, yeah, I have not defined a queue yet. So I have to say Q equals DQ LS2, yeah. Now if I type LS2, it's still, I mean, the original list is still there, but we are not, um, what do you say, uh, modifying the original list, but we are calling, uh, taking that item and, you know, we are serving them our, for whatever purpose, right? But if I type Q, uh, that is LS2, right? But if I type Q, you see the Q itself has reduced. Because we call Aquaman, whatever issue that he had with his iPhone or Android phone, we fixed him, fixed that, and or we took his phone or we sent him home. Then comes Batman, something wrong with his bat wings, car tire or something. Then we're going to fix that and I'll send him home. Right, so then I'm gonna say q u e u e dot append. I'm gonna say wonder woman. Right, I can add um, people to. So once Aquaman is left, Wonder Woman also has some issues with a uh, you know uh, her hero suit. He she wanted to get a new shade, a bangles or whatever. Right, so she joins the queue. Now, how do you do that? You do append just like do you, you do to the list. This one does, and then now Q has Wonder Woman, right? So, yep. So, how do you implement a Q? This is how you go ahead and implement a Q. So, Q uh, list dot pop left pops the leftmost item from the stack. It is the same as list dot pop zero. Okay, zeroth index. By default, pop uh, pops out the last item, but if you give an index that is zero, then it pops out the leftmost. So you can implement queue with list dot pop zero and list dot append as well. But I just wanted to introduce queue, so I took this route. So how do you create an empty list? Create an empty list, yeah. And DC is this. DC type DC, it's a list, but it has no items. And then jail, we already have this. Length of jail is five. Length of DC is zero. Okay, so how do you add a list? One, let's say, 
1 comma 2 plus as you know these are two lists I will say 2 comma 3 1 2 3 4 as easy as that this is how you add lists it's the same as extend you know let's say 1 comma 2 let's see whether this will work or not hmm, but it's not going to print out anything I'm going to say a equals this and then I'm going to say a hmm, nothing so it's not going to work like this then we have uh, what if I want to add uh, let's say ls2 uh, a string right I have jl I have ls2, ls2 plus jl. You can do that too. Hmm? What if you want to, let's say, jl is this and jl star 2 twice. This is called a rapid. So this is concatenate lists. Concatenate. lists right and this is repetition how many times you want to repeat the list you can do jl star 2 2 star jl both will work then here batman in jl true check membership yeah this checks membership Mm, okay again I will take the same thing Batman not in jail false because Batman is in jail I mean not jail <laughs> in JL right what if I say Spider-Man in jail no he's not not in jail absolutely true so in and not in okay in not in checks the membership of given elements from a collection okay then yeah uh, another one is max jl and then you have minimum jl aquaman then if i say let's say nums is I want to define another one here on the list one two three four five yeah so what is a maximum when I say max when I apply max on a list it gets um, an I an element which is the largest how is it the largest well you go ahead and know and calculate their positions of each letters uh, that is how it uh, checks it Minimum again, Aquaman is uh, it says minimum as you can see. Um, a uh, Q is yeah, it's very uh, at the end, but uh, as a whole, Python calculates Batman as uh, the largest member. Actually, I thought Flash uh, would be the minimum because it has very less letters, but I was wrong. So, um, I think it's more clear on integers, max, nums, yeah, it's five, minimum of them is one. I don't think there is any confusion here, max, list, yeah, and returns the largest 
member largest element Okay, so this is what I have for max and minimum. You can append okay, a list to list. ls1 is this, ls2 is this. I can do ls2 dot append, append one list to another. And you say ls2, yeah. And again, I'm gonna do ls2 dot extend maybe ls1 let's see what happens yep i created a whole <laughs> a nested uh, messy list right nested where first four elements are string uh, fifth one itself is a list which contains tuple and then you have um, now another uh, then you have three more tuples okay so that is a nested list then we have uh, boolean let's say boolean one is true uh, false i'm going to define this boolean two is mm, true true okay so i'm going to say any um, any bool one yeah it says true yeah so what does that mean uh, basically what i'm asking python is is any one of them in this is true in boolean one yes what if i say is uh, any in uh, bool two is any one of them is true yes let me go ahead and do this bool three Mm. false false yeah again the uh, comma uh, space doesn't matter it will still be considered as a list and then i'm gonna do any on any bool three yeah see what happened here false because none of them none of them in this list has a true statement okay uh, let me do another one here as we know mm, one in one is int let's say Let's say type one is int yeah true right so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to create another one here bool four yeah i'm going to say this and false let's see what happens here i'm not really sure what happens let's say any bool four true because when i say um any mem any is any element in this is true it can also an element can also be a statement this statement is true so it automatically evaluated it to be true and it is letting us know that yeah it's true okay so then we have another one all all bool one are all of them true statement now all bool two bool three false all wait all bool two yeah so all the statements in boolean in this list are true so yeah 
So any list, right? Checks if any element in the list is true. All list checks if any element in the list are sorry, if all elements in the list are, are true. Okay, so that's what happens here. Mm, let me do a markdown here. Okay, so I think that's uh, then what else is left? Okay, there's one more. I want to do a list enumerate bool one comma zero. What is it doing? Enumerating is nothing but, uh, let's say you have a list, you have a list of, um, hmm, let me do another one here, list. This would be more clear. Enumerate jail, start from zero, right? So zero, you had a list and you wanna um, enumerate it, you add an index or something, then you can do this way. Uh, let's say you don't wanna start with a zero, you wanna start with one maybe or 11, Maybe, right? So it's hard with 11. Uh, but can we use A alphabets? I don't think so. But what if I make it a string? Hmm. No, we can't. All right, so that is how you go ahead and enumerate them. Uh, I think we covered almost all of it, or, or at least whatever I knew on lists. Um, go through every now and then, uh, whenever you think you need to refresh on what you know about lists. Because most of the times we try to solve, uh, I, I myself have been a victim of trying to create these custom functions, whereas built-in functions are already there. Mm, if somebody has invented the wheel, why reinvent it? And waste our time and waste our employer's time, our, whomever is working for our your own project, right? Why waste time there? And it also makes our life a bit easier, a lot easier, I would say. So thank you for tuning in. Have a great one. Take care.